Welcome to each one, reach one family. We're back, Israel. Give me liberty or give me death. Part 29 is about to commence. We're, we're steady, nice and steady on this trek. All right. For everybody that's rocking with me, thank you for, for continuing on with your brother. Again, we're going to get through it and you will be edified. You should be a new, a new man, a new woman by the end of this journey. Okay. It is my prayer that you are all edified by this word, that you don't just sit and listen, but you are all increased in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I pray to the Father that as I plant these seeds, that he water and he provide the increase for us all, for you as well as myself, okay? This is a study for all of us. I'm not here teaching. We are studying together, okay? We're studying together, all right? Let's give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem HaMashiach Yahweh Shai. All praises due to our power. Peace, blessings, and great salutations to my family out there, the elect, the 144,000 out there, listening, learning, being made strong through the spirit in their faith. We ended our last lesson in Romans chapter nine at verse 33. We're gonna pick up today, still in the book of Romans. We're gonna, we're gonna begin in verse, I'm sorry, chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse one, and we are out of the NLT version, okay? Let's get it. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to the Father is for the people of Israel to be saved. Again, this is Paul. What did he say? The longing of my heart and my prayer to the Father, the prayer, my prayer to Yahweh, is for the people of Israel to be saved. Not the people of the entire planet, the people of Israel okay, to be saved, all right? I know what enthusiasm they have for the Father, but it is misdirected zeal, yeah. There's a lot of you out there, you know, you have love and enthusiasm for the Father, but it is misdirected zeal. That's why you gotta come out of these false teachings, the false doctrine that you're following, all right? Get out of the Old Testament only belief, get out of the law pushing belief, okay? You got to come out of that. That's misdirected zeal. For they don't understand Yahweh's way of making people right with himself. They don't. They don't understand his way of making people right with him. They think the law is everything. Refusing to accept Yahweh's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with the Father by trying to keep the law. Is that not what they do? Is that not what they do? They don't understand his way of making people right with themselves. Uh, with himself, so they refuse to, to accept his way. Instead, they choose to cling to their own way, their own way, self-sanctification, of getting right with the Father by trying to keep the law, by trying to earn their own way into his kingdom, into his good graces. Verse 4, for Hamashiach has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him, Yahweh Shai, are made right with the Father. Getting right with Yahweh Shai is it means in order to get right with the Father. I'm sorry, believing in Yahweh Shai is your means to getting right with the Father. The Father had to give you another way to come back to him because under the old law, the old covenant, we were all doomed to die. He cannot accept us back. We cannot come back groveling to him and he accept us. It doesn't work that way. He divorced, divorced Israel and he put Judah away. He put Judah away, right? The Southern kingdom, I should say, Benjamin and Judah and some of the Levites put them away, okay? And then what happened? Went away into full adultery, full idolatry, which means under the law, he cannot accept us back. Remember, we were considered betrothed to the father as women, his wives. That's how he looked at us, okay? By the old covenant, he could not put us away and then take us back. He couldn't do it, but he loves us so much that he didn't want to throw us away. And he promised that he would not. He made a promise to Abraham and he gave, he gave us his word. So he needed a different way in order to save us. 
He needed a different way in order to have a relationship with us. You guys got to understand this. This is the principal stuff, okay? These are the, the rudiments of, of our belief system. You got to get the ABCs of the doctrine. Otherwise, everything else is going to be a jumbled mess of confusion, okay? Verse 5, for Moses writes, Moses, he's, so he's referring, this is Paul referring to the Old Testament again, again. For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with the Father requires obedience to all of his commands. But faith's way of getting right with the Father says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Hamashiach down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Hamashiach back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you confess with your mouth that Yahweh Shai is Lord and believe in your heart that the Father raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. Yahweh Shai didn't raise himself up from the dead. He was raised up by the Father who sent him. The Father is in the mix. He is in control. He is not usurped. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with the Father. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Take that time right, right now to do this for yourselves. All right? By believing in your heart that you are made right with the Father. And by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Say it. And let the words go from your mouth into your ears and into your heart, okay? This is how you're saved. This is how you're gonna be resurrected from the congregation of the dead. Verse 11, as the scripture tells us, the scripture, see, here it is again, as the scriptures tell us, that means we're talking Old Testament, the Old Testament being referred to again. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This was back then. Now, it doesn't matter that everybody calls on his name. A lot of these law keepers, a lot of these law pushers are calling on his name. They're calling on his name, but they're not believing in, in his doctrine. They're disrespecting and rejecting his son, his olive branch to us, his sacrifice for us. They're turning it down. It's like the most high prepared a dinner, called you in, and then they decided to spit the food out and say, no, thank you. I don't want that nasty shit. He's, he feels disrespected by that. He feels slighted. That's why you have wrath coming, law pushers. Verse 14. But how can they call him on him to save them unless they believe in him? See, you can't call on him to save you unless you believe in him. And you can't say that you believe in him and don't follow his doctrine. You can't have one without the other. And you can't say, I believe in his doctrine, but 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 the law of Moses is still in effect. You can't have both. You don't get it. That's not how it works. You got to choose. And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Right. How will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Yahweh Shai, the father, and Yahweh Shai selected Paul and sent Paul to be the apostle to the Gentiles so that they would know him and can, be, and can be saved by him. That is why, look, here it goes again. That's why the scriptures say, the Old Testament, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers 
who bring good news. What's, who says that? The scriptures, the Old Testament. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, what? Isaiah the prophet, is he in the New Testament? Oh man, here's another person just made up in the New Testament. But not everyone welcomes the good news, welcomes the gospel. For Isaiah the prophet said, Yahweh, who has believed, Yahweh, who has believed our message? Let's get that again. Let me clean that up because I didn't come out smoothly. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah, the prophet said, Yahweh, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news, the gospel about Hamashiach. That's where faith comes from. All these people saying the New Testament doesn't exist and they don't believe Hamashiach, they don't have faith. And that's why they don't understand the scriptures. But I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. The message has gone throughout the earth and the words to all the world. You know to see how the world and the earth is separated. They're not the same. The earth, the message has gone throughout the earth and the words to all the world throughout to all of Israel, all of the Israelites. The message has gone out to all of them so that there can be no excuse for the ignorance because you can't hold them accountable for something they don't know about. That's why how can we be held accountable for works of the law if we were not born under the law in this time, if we were not raised under the law, if we had no knowledge of self and heritage and customs, how would we be responsible and accountable for, for the law? Doesn't make any sense. That's why we were given grace. But I ask, did the people of Israel really understand? Yes, they did. For even in the time of Moses, listen, here it is, connected in the New Testament with the Old Testament again, the Old Testament being referred to yet again. Yes, they did. For even in the time of Moses, the father said, I will rouse your jealousy through people who are not even a nation. I will make you jealous with the people who are not a people. That's what he said. I will provoke your anger through the foolish Gentiles. And later, Isaiah spoke boldly for the father. Again, Isaiah, the prophet, being referred to yet again. Yet again. Okay? And later, Isaiah, the prophet from the Old Testament, spoke boldly for the father, saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. But regarding Israel, the father said, all day long, I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. All day long, I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. That stubborn, stiff-necked Israel for you right there. That's us. That's our people, most definitely, without a doubt. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I ask then, has the father rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. What did father, what did, what did Yahweh say? For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob, you see the you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right? He has not rejected us. That's why he hasn't destroyed us. Because there was, if there was ever a nation of people who deserved to be destroyed, it's us. It's us for all of our wickedness against him, but he did not destroy us because he does not change concerning the fact that we are his chosen people. So has the father rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, the father has not rejected his own people whom he chose from the very beginning. See, again, the father getting his glory, constantly being lifted up, 
and spoken about, referred to, right? As the ultimate authority. Do you realize what the scriptures say about this? The scriptures say, there it is again. Do you realize what the Old Testament say, what the Old Testament scriptures say about this? Elijah, the prophet, Elijah, aka John the Baptist, in his previous life, I'm sorry, in his, in his previous life, he was Elijah. Elijah, the prophet, complained to the father about the people of Israel and said, Yahweh, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Look, look what the look what the circumcision was doing. Look what, what, what the so-called law pushers were and law keepers were doing. They killed his prophets. They kept killing, they had a history of killing those the father sent to them. Sound familiar? Yahushua. <clears throat> they killed him. The prophet, the father sent to them. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. They do what they've always done. They persecute and kill the prophets. They go contrary to the law. They disrespect the father. They hate the law. Torn down his altars. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And do you remember Yahweh's reply? He said, no, I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal. Father was like, no, I have met 7,000 other prophets out there, man, that you have no idea about. No idea about. I got them everywhere. I would never allow all my men to be destroyed. That will not happen. It is the same today for a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of the father's grace, his undeserved kindness in choosing them, his undeserved kindness in choosing them. See, why did they remain faithful? Because of his grace, his undeserved kindness in, in choosing them. See, that's how he got that unconditional love, that kind of strong faith that, that these people had. Why did they have it? Not because of anything they did to earn it or deserve it, because they were faithful because of Yahweh's grace. He gave them grace and undeserved kindness. So they were faithful to him. Think about it. It's the same thing he wants now. He wants us to be faithful to him. He seeks to make us faithful to him by causing us to love him and appreciate him, respect him and honor him and be grateful to him because we need him. We need his grace. We need his mercy. We need his love. And he gives it to us. Although we are undeserving of his kindness, he chooses us anyway. That comes from the liberty and grace he gives us, not from works of the law. And since it is through Yahweh's kindness, then it is not by their good works. For in that case, Yahweh's grace would not be what it really is, free and undeserved. No, you would have deserved it. You would have earned it. If it was by works, then where is all the glory that he gets? Where, where is all his praise? You wouldn't. You would praise yourself. You would say, I did this. You wouldn't be that thankful to him. You wouldn't be that appreciative to him, right? You don't go to work, bust your ass, 90 hours a week, and then when you get your check, thanks, boss, for my check. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you giving me this check, boss. I really appreciate it. Thank you. No, you busted your ass and worked for 40 or 90 hours, whatever the hell you worked, you worked for it. You earned it. So you didn't say thank you for the check? <laughs> you people, man, I'm like, you really can't get this? Really? Anyway, verse seven. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of the father they are looking for so earnestly. A few have the ones the father has chosen, the one third, but the hearts of the rest were hardened. The two thirds, their hearts were hardened so that they could not find 
with the one third has found, right? They have not found the favor that we have found because their hearts were hardened. He said, this is what I'm telling you. It is not by mistake. It is by design. Like the Pharaoh, the father has a purpose for keeping them deaf, dumb, and blind. Okay? He has a reason behind causing them to be Old Testament-only Israelites and making them disrespect Yahweh Shai day in and day out. He has a reason for that. Verse 8, as the scriptures say, do I got to say it? Nah, I ain't going to say it. You know it. The father has put them into a deep sleep. That's when he caused all of the nation to go into the deep sleep and to lose knowledge of self. We, we forgot about him. We forgot about who we were, our customs, all of that. He put us into a deep sleep. To this day, he has shut their eyes so they do not see and closed their ears so they do not hear. Okay? He has put the people into a deep sleep. He has shut their eyes so that they do not see and close their ears so that they do not hear. And this was back then. He did this to them back then. And because this was the case, they carried it into this lifetime. Right? They weren't able to repent and be saved back then. They did not accept the sacrifice in the blood of Yahweh Shai as their atonement back then. So they died back then and they were awakened in this time with the same dumb spirit, with the same things that they earned, with their, with their same lot from, from the last go round, the deaf, dumb, and blindness. They can't they don't know the things that we know. They can't see the things that we see. They can't hear the things that we hear. Not in this time because they couldn't see it or hear it back then. They're back now, the same as they've always been. This is the works of the Father. They're not going to get it. Likewise, David said, oh, here we go, another reference to the Old Testament. Let their bountiful table become a snare. A trap that makes them think all is well. That's the law of Moses. That bountiful table has become a snare to them. They become a trap that makes them think all is well. Let their blessings cause them to stumble and let them get what they deserve. Let their eyes go blind so they cannot see and let their backs be bent forever, forever meaning in every lifetime. That's why I didn't say until they die. It says forever because they come back. You come back multiple lifetimes. And they had to carry this into every lifetime. They had to be blind, life after life, being stubborn with their backs bent, rejecting Yahweh Shai, disrespected and being disobedient to the Father, lifetime after lifetime lifetime okay let's go to romans chapter 13 romans chapter 13 verse 8 okay romans chapter 13 verse 8 oh nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of Yahweh's law. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of Yahweh's law. Okay? Let's let's jump out of Romans really quick. We're going to come back, but let's go over let's go to Mark Mark 12. Let's get Mark 12 and 31. Mark chapter 12, verse 31. This is concerning the law, right? The commandments of the Father. The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, 
Yahweh, your power is the one and only Lord. And you must love Yahweh, your power with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Yeah, I have to come up here and start from the top. It just makes sense to do it. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Oh, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. See? Red ladder. This is how Shai saying this. This is how Shai saying this. Right? Saying exactly what you just heard before in Romans. Right? From Paul. Okay? Exactly what you just heard. Right? Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of the Father's law. Right? So, again, is Paul just running rogue, being a false prophet? Sounds to me like he's saying exact the same thing Yahweh Shai had to say. Right? Lock step. Lock step. Get James 2 and 8. James 2 and 8. Yes, indeed. It is good when you obey the royal law. The royal law, not the law of Moses, the royal law, the king's law, as found where? In the scriptures. Old Testament. Love your neighbor as yourself. There it is, James, saying the same thing that Paul said, who are both saying the same thing that Yahweh Shai said, who are all saying the same thing that was commanded of us in the Old Testament. Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine that. All right, let's jump back over to Romans. We were in chapter 13, and let's pick up at verse 9. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of the Father's law. This is, this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. You know how late it is in the game? This is urgent for you guys to understand. If it was late back then, do you understand how late it is now? We're at the gate. We are at where I'm telling you, we're at the end of this movie. We are at the end of this movie. We're on the final page of this script. The most high is written. There's no time for us to be playing around. That's why this is the most important topic we can even be discussing in this time. This is the reason why I'm taking my time and we got this multi-part lesson, right? There's so many parts to it because this is the most important thing that we need to get ironed out for salvation, right? Before the end comes, the end end, this is what we need to work out. This is what you need to understand the most, okay? So this is why we're making sure the body gets edified and everybody gets clarity on this. There is nothing more important than this topic right now in this time in world history, okay? In this time, this we're in, we are, you gotta understand timelines. Where are we in the most highest timeline? We're at the very, very end, the very, very end. This was the end in their time, the beginning of the end. We're at the end of the end now, okay? This is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up! For our salvation is nearer now.
than when we first believed. This is truer now than it was when Paul uttered these words back then. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds, Israel, like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Immorality, right living, lawlessness. That's what they believe. That's what, that's what, it's, that's what it preaches on, under law of liberty, right living. Because we belong to the day we must live decent lives for all to see. We must be an example. Live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. All these things are fruit of the law of Moses. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. When you do this, it makes you hold yourself to a different standard. You walk, you walk around every day trying to please your power, trying to walk righteously. It makes you a better person than the law does. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Listen, where does Paul say, go out and live lawlessly? Where does the doctrine say that? Where does this doctrine that we believe in, where does it say what you guys say it says? Where is it? It's not here. It's only in your heads, law pushers. You guys are liars. You guys are liars. You bear false witness against the law of liberty holders. False witness. Because, but you can't help it. That's what you guys always done. You're all law pushers. You bear false witness against Yahweh Shai. You bear false witness against Paul, against each other. There's no honor among thieves, right? No honor amongst the wicked. One third, never respect any honor from these people. If you allow yourself to hang out with snakes, you deserve to be bitten. And you can't blame the snakes. It was your fault. Never forget the snake's nature, even if it allows you to pet it. It's still a snake. And it will resort back to its, its natural instincts. It just can't help itself. Okay? Law pushers err not knowing the scriptures. So they say the law of liberty and grace from the most high is an excuse to sin and be without moral code of conduct. They're condemned by their own ignorance. Condemned by their own ignorance. Don't let them take you down with them. Depart from them. Separate yourselves from them. There's no good that can come to you from being in their company. Trust me. Let's get Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. You have been called to live in freedom. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Again, consistent. Where does it say ever? Show me in the scriptures where it says the law of liberty or freedom that we live in gives us the doctrine and the, the license and the excuse to live immorally, right? To live without law. No, we live with laws, which is not the law of Moses, right? We have a guide, we have a compass, just not the law of Moses, right? The law of Moses as a compass has only led people into Seth to, uh, to sin, death, and bondage. That's it. That's all there's ever, there ever was, okay? You got to understand this. For the law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware 
of destroying one another. That's their character, the character of the law pushers. That's what they do. They force guys like me to have to do videos where I'm constantly talking to them and talking about them because that's all they do. We try to just be in peace. We just wanted a whole lot of leave me the fuck alone. Leave us be. But that's not what they do. They come into all of our spaces, to the channels where we congregate, all the places where we are, and they come nagging and trolling and just being downright heathens and, and wicked. That's what they do. That's what they do. We ain't call, we're not called to be chumps, to be pushovers, to let them run us over. No, we're not called for that. See, we're supposed to be in the same temperament as our head. Yahweh Shai is no longer the lamb. He is coming back as the destroyer, the Gentile slayer, the heathen slayer. He's coming back to kill his enemies. You think he wants us to bow down and allow his enemies to walk on, on our heads? Fuck no. Fuck no. He don't want us to buck up and go do anything to them ourselves. Oh, but we are to defend ourselves, right? We're not to lay down, bow down to them and just curl up in the corner. We don't put our tails between our legs and cower to them. That's what we don't do. Yahweh Shah is not a coward. So how the fuck is his body going to be moving in cowardice? That's out. That's Christianity. That's Christianity. No soft shit over here. No punks, no cowards in the body of Hamashiach. None. Verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. The Holy Spirit that was only given to the law of liberty keepers, the, the, the faithful to Yahweh Shai, the believers in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, only, not the law pushers, this Holy Spirit, the same one, let that Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. We are told to be led by the Spirit and don't do what our, our sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Again, when you are directed by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses because you don't need it. You don't need it. You are governed by the spirit. The spirit does for us what the law of Moses was supposed to do for them. I'm sorry, not supposed to do what in theory, what they believe the law of Moses is supposed to do for them. The spirit actually does for us what they believe the law of Moses is supposed to do for them, but never has and never will do. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of the Father, will not inherit the kingdom of the Father. Only the one third will inherit the kingdom. We'll walk in and inherit the kingdom. We'll get to see and talk to Yahweh Shai. We'll get to see the Father. He will only show himself to the elect that is the curse of the two thirds because he's gonna allow them to be saved and come into the kingdom via childbearing. When the one third, his elect men have babies, that's how they'll, they'll come into the kingdom, right? They'll be born in that way through the same men 
who they disrespect and they hate. We're going to we're going to birth them into the kingdom. And they're going to be deprived of the, the opportunity of the honor of the blessing to see the father. They'll never get to see him. That is reserved for the first fruit. All praises do. But the Holy Spirit, I was about to say Holy Scriptures, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. When you go into any place where the law of liberty is the focus, just look around and notice. Take the temperature of the room and you will notice that it's a peaceful place to be. It's a peaceful place to be, right? There's brotherly and sisterly love flying all around the place. It's just a different environment, a different energy because it's a different spirit governing that group, all right? This is where you want to be, but you can't force yourself into this group. You can't make yourself one of the two thirds. I'm sorry, one of the one third. You either are or you aren't. You can't make yourself one of the two thirds. You either are or you aren't. And which you are will be made manifest. And that will happen, should have happened. Um, and or that because that will happen with the study or probably already happened with some of you out there already. Your spirit has already bore witness and manifested himself to who you are and where exactly you reside in the spectrum. Right? Right. So let's get Romans uh, chapter 15, verse 8. Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Okay. Remember that Hamashiach came as a servant to the Jews to show that the father is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. Look, Hamashiach, Yahushua, he came as a servant to the Jews, not someone boasting to be God, to be the almighty, to be the king, none of that. He came as a servant to his brethren to do what? to show that the father is true, to show that himself is almighty and true and all powerful and that he has replaced the old God of the Old Testament. No, he came as a servant to his brethren to show that the father is true, to show that the father is no liar because he needed to come in order for the promises of the father to be made manifest. Because without his coming, the father is made a liar. He's made a liar without the coming of Yahweh Shai. This is what I'm saying. If you guys say that there is no Yahweh Shai, that he didn't exist and that he wasn't the son, you're making the father himself a liar. You're saying his promises were null and void. That he lied to us. He didn't really mean it. He was just playing. He was just playing, y'all. Y'all know the most high. He a joster like that. He used to be saying shit he really don't mean. You know how he get down. No, that's not how he get down. And yes, I do know how he gets down because I know my father. He keeps his word. He gave promises and his promises have to be kept. The only way his promises could be kept is if he sent his son as a propitiation for our sins. That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, we sons of Jacob would be consumed. We will be thrown away. We will be destroyed. And the promise that he made to Father Abraham will be disannulled. He also came so that the Gentiles, the Northern Kingdom Israelites, might give glory to the Father for his mercies to them as he divorced them. So he wanted to show their mercies. He wanted to bring them back. He wanted to reunify Israel, all 12 tribes. That is why the psalmist, that is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, talking about David, he's talking about the Old Testament again. Here's the Old Testament being spoken of and mentioned again, referred to, for this, I will praise you among the Gentiles. 
I will sing praises to your name. And then another place it is written, rejoice with his people, you Gentiles. Mercy from the Most High came by grace and his blessing of the law of liberty. There was no mercy in the law of Moses, only bondage and death. Okay? Only bondage and death. No mercy. As spoken of here in verse 9. He wanted the Gentiles to give him glory for his mercies. He doesn't get his glory when you can do things for yourself. He gets his glory when he does things for you that you don't deserve, when he steps in for you and he helps you out, when he takes care of you, when he provides for you, when he protects you. He gets his glory and he always wants his glory. You better get to know him. If you don't know him, you better study up and get to know him. All right. Let's get verse 12. And in another place, Isaiah said here, Isaiah again, from Old Testament prophet, the heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. This didn't happen with, with King Solomon. He didn't rule over the Gentiles. They didn't place their hope in him. It couldn't happen because at the time, the kingdom was still unified. The kingdom was still unified under King Solomon. So that makes no sense. It was written that the Gentiles, aka the lost sheep, would trust in Yahweh Shai, not the law of Moses. This was written a four time in the Old Testament. Okay? The Old Testament. Let's get Romans chapter 15. Even so, I have been bold enough to write about some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder. See, all you need is this reminder. For by Yahweh's grace, I am a special messenger. To Hamashiach, from Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, to you Gentiles. I bring you the good news so that I might present you as an acceptable offering to the Father, not to Yahweh Shai, to the Father, because this is what it's all about. The Father is reclaiming that which was lost. Those he divorced and cast away, he's reclaiming everybody. He had to do it this way. Don't you get it? So that I might present you as an acceptable offering to Yahweh made holy by the law of Moses. No, by the Holy Spirit that you only receive by faith and belief on the Son. Got to believe in Yahweh Shai to get the Holy Spirit. There's no way around it. I'm saying in chapter 15, we're going to get verse 30. Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, to join in my struggle by praying to the Father for me. Do this because of your love for me, given to you by the Holy Spirit. Pray that I will be rescued from those in Judea who refuse to obey the Father, the law pushers. Pray also that the believers there will be willing to accept the donation I am, at, I am taking to Jerusalem. Then, by the will of the Father, the will of the Father, not the will of Yahweh Shai, I will be able to come to you with a joyful heart, and we will be an encouragement to each other. You see, the scriptures completely differ from what these people say about them. Okay. Get it? Completely differs from what they say. That's why you got to study to show thyself approved. Okay? You're going to learn a lot more when you read this for yourselves, when you pray. And he comes to sup with you, removes the veil and, re and re reveals all things to you. That's how this works. 
Romans chapter 16, verse 17. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Hamashiach, our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests by smooth talk and glowing words. They deceive innocent people. They're smooth talkers. You know what I mean? They, they, they sling the word around, they sling the scriptures around in a way that have you believing and trusting in their knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. Smooth talk and with glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Let's get verse 25. Now, all glory to Yahweh Shai. No, that's not what it says. Wow, I still can't find a place where they're saying, Paul, this false prophet is coming, you know, and, and in the New Testament, you know, it's all about usurping the father and giving you this new false God. And where is it? Actually, I hear them saying it, but I don't find it in the scripture. That's crazy. Hmm. Now, all glory to Yahweh, who was able to make you strong, just as my good news says. This message about Yahweh Shai Hamashiach has revealed his plan. Who's his? The father, Yahweh. For you Gentiles, it's Yahweh's plan. It's his game plan being run. A plan kept secret from the beginning of time. This is why those Old Testament onlys don't get it. It was kept secret from the beginning of time. It's mentioned, but only those who are privy to the Holy Spirit, privy to the oil, right? Only, they, they, that's a secret club was able to understand the secret it's like he wrote it in mystery ink right he wrote it in mystery ink and only only those who have the decoder can come along and see what's really there but now as the prophets foretold again we're referencing the prophets in the old testament but now as the prophets foretold and as the eternal power has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere so that they too might believe and obey him. Obey who? Who's the him? The father. The father to whom all praise, honor, and glory is due. The, 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 the power that's not been, not been usurped. He has not been replaced. He has not been substituted. He's not, he's not been squeezed out. All glory, listen, to the only wise power. Listen, all glory to the only wise power, Yahweh, the Father, through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach forever. Again, why did the Most High give the Holy Spirit and spiritual power to Paul and the other disciples to push an incorrect doctrine. If they were going off in their ministering and leading people astray, why didn't he kill them? Take away the gifts of the spirit and raise up new apostles. If the entire objective was to save Israel and reconcile his people to him. Hmm? Why didn't the Most High commission all Levites to spread the gospel and teach repentance and grant repentance. Why did he send all Levites? That's what you would do according to the law, right? Does the Most High not know the law? Why were the law pushers not included or utilized for saving the people instead of persecuting and leading them into damnation? If everyone comes back into their lot, there should be modern day Pharisees law pushers, Sadducees, and non-believers in this time that didn't repent when it was offered, who are blind, dead in their sins, and pushing the law while striving against the disciples of Yahweh Shai as before. You are who you were. 
You are who you were. The camps, the corner boys are proud, arrogant, boasters of themselves. Their works, their camp cult, their members, number of videos, their elders and so-called apostles and of the law that they can't and don't keep. They even admit it and say that they keep it to the best of their ability, which is not scriptural. You gotta keep all of it. That's not scriptural at all. That's crazy talk. Where is that in scripture? Tell them to prove it. Prove all things. Prove all things. Show me in the scripture where it says, keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Show me. I'll wait. I'll wait. But I ain't gonna hold my breath. All right, y'all. That's, that'll do it for this one. I appreciate you guys hanging out with your brother again at Each One Reach One. We got through another one. We're going to go ahead and tie the bow tie on, on another beautiful lesson, I believe. That is a wrap. Now I'm going to shoot you the gift. Okay? I'm going to shoot you the gift. Unpackage it and take it in. Enjoy this word. Get this spiritual food. All right? and let it work a work in you. That is my prayer, that you are edified by this word, by this study, and that the Most High provides the increase to the planting of these seeds. He waters them, and he, he makes them to grow, to flourish inside of you, changes you, all right? That is my hope, all right? It's all about the gathering of the elect. That's what it's all about. That's what time we're on giving all praise, honor, and glory to our precious Father, Yahweh, bless his glorious name, praying in the name of our beloved Lord and Savior, our Master, Redeemer, and our loving big brother, intercessor, Yahweh Shai, all praises due. Peace and blessings to you out there, the elect, listening and learning, being built up in faith, through the Holy Spirit. I'll see you guys very soon on the next one, okay? Y'all hang tight. Enjoy your liberty out there. Watch out for the wickedness that at every corner is waiting on you. See you on the next one, everybody. Shalom.